you sound beautiful. It's okay. Always beautiful. Generation feeling depressed due to FOMO. It's like I don't understand. The FOMO is actually it's me. Everyone's earning like yeah, I just don't bother the day. Telling you the um the fabric between Silicon Valley and yeah. the world has been ripped. <laughs> ripped. I mean, ripped in a bad open. way. No, in a in a good what way. What do you mean in a good way? Got Silicon Valley a FOMO ga yakan. The FOMO na excitement ga yakan spill over on. Ah. Oh, we can start. Huh? Yeah. It's like on? Yeah. Oh, why did you do <laughs> Sorry. No, it's fine. Hi. Oh, oh my God. My voice is really bad. Hi, C Crypto Chris. <laughs> Hello. Um, <clears throat> Hi, this is Crypto Soul Erica, uh, episode 11. Uh, Happy New Year, 2018. Um, my voice is really horrible. I'm sorry about the voice. Um, I've been. Uh, I caught a really bad cold and um, my voice is just not coming out. It's been two weeks, so I thought I shouldn't delay any longer and just go with the go with this husky, you know, voice. So sorry about that. Um, there has been um, very interesting uh, news in the past during the past two days. Um, yesterday it was pretty shocking. There were many many news coming out, pouring out of the Korean market, and I'm sure you noticed. Um, uh, the market's crashing. It, it actually crashed yesterday. Um, it's still crashing. Um, <clears throat> and so I'm, I just wanted to tell you why that's happening. And if there are any um, other reasons you know, behind it, I'm sure many of you are curious. They've been, you've been all contacting me, asking for help. And, um, <clears throat> okay, sorry. <laughs> I will um, summarize some of the major news that's been happening in the Korean market yesterday, during the past week. Okay. So... Let's move on. So first news is yesterday night, uh, there was news coming out of the major uh, media sources that uh, Ministry of Justice of Korea has prepared a legislative measure to ban all cryptocurrency exchanges in Korea. But again, it's not finalized and it's just in the process of talking and discussing with um, uh, relevant ministries, but um, the Ministry of Justice, as I've explained before, has taken charge of the um, regulations of cryptocurrency ex cryptocurrencies in South Korea, and um, and we were expecting um, some really uh, aggressive measures by the Ministry of Justice, and here it is. So they just prepared um, that they thought that this was. Um, actually going to um, end in catastrophic results um, by, you know, uh, if the bubble um, pops. So it prepared um, a legislative measure to ban all cryptocurrency exchanges, but it is still in the process of discussion. So no worries about, you know, the market crashing suddenly or anything. Um, but yeah, this has been pretty shocking. Everyone's been, um, the market kind of shook a little bit after this news came out. Um, but yeah, it's been covered by the major Korean news sources. Um, yeah, and another thing that happened yesterday was, um, so there was uh, <laughs> all kinds of aggressive, um, uh, I don't know, um, search by the police and by the National Tax Service of Bitham and Coin One. So there was news, uh, news yesterday one of my um uh one of my friends uh he actually was a, a previous employee at bitham and he got news that people from the national tax service have just suddenly came into the bitham office and took some relevant documents relating to what not i'm not sure what exactly the um resources that they've been looking for is but 
um, it has been this news has just come out and it has recorded and the server this um, actually media server crashed because people were um, sharing it everywhere and this has been actually uh, accelerating the market crash and previous to that coin one uh, is under um, has been under police investigation um, mainly due to margin trading um, uh, margin trading and all sorts of uh, um, I don't know, like illegal activities that it may have been under. So um, these two news is by um, by you know uh, I bet them and Coin One has actually um, accelerated the market crash. People are panicking. Is it really going down? And um, so this these two news really helped <laughs> helped but accelerated um, this whole panic in the market. And so the government is showing that it will um, be aggressive in terms of um, regulating the market um, by you know, these three announcements or activities. So um, I'm sure many of you are really <laughs> have been really curious about what happened, and, but these two, three main events happened. Um, and yes. This is terrible. Yeah, this is <laughs> pretty terrible. And it happened all in one day. So yesterday, it was mar news after news coming out, is pouring out. People were contacting me or other, you know, industry players, and just they just. Do and I'm sure uh, I got news that today there will be um, a not public but very secret secret meeting um, by the Ministry of Justice. So and by the uh, with the foreign or the media sources together to gather to discuss about the announcement that they made yesterday. So I think there will be news after this um, emergency meeting today. Um, so I will cover that hopefully um, ASAP. But if there are many, if there are really urgent news, I will definitely share it uh, right away. So um, yeah, and another news that happened, uh, I'll move on to the next news. So that's that basically what happened yesterday. Um, and also another interesting news was that Bitham is out for sale. Uh, <laughs> um, so there has been rumors that Bitham was out for M and A. Uh, it is um, one of the you know it's looking for somebody, some you know company to um, run its business. And and there has been news that it has actually um, dis had discussions with a uh, major portal site, uh, but it. Did, the negotiation didn't work out, but there um, it is pretty certain that Bitham is looking for um, its new owner. So, yeah, this is pretty shocking. That was pretty shocking. But I think due to Corbett's uh, acquisition um, previously, I think Bitham was continuously interested in um, doing the same thing because Corbett has been acquired at a really high price. So um, maybe that can be one of the strategies of Bitham. I'm not really sure, but I think um, this was pretty major news as well. Um, yeah, and another news uh, that was pretty, I was really shocked by this. Uh, yeah, <laughs> um, Coin1, uh, I trade on Coin1 and um, uh, I do have Ethereum Classic and suddenly the price dropped. Uh, below one dollar, <laughs> so it's usually it's pretty high, right? The Ethereum cl uh, Classic is pretty high, but suddenly in one second the price just dropped. Um, so as you can see, the I mean this is not a regular <laughs> um, graph that you can see. This is very regular activity. So everyone was panicking. What is happening? And they were they couldn't believe their eyes. Um, and it's. I, I, we're not sure what happened, actually. Um, maybe somebody and people, and there are news that um, people uh, bought Ethereum Classic at this low price, um, and they bought 633 of uh, Ethereum Classic uh, by less than a dollar. So this is pretty a huge bargain, a huge gain for those people. Um, and so and the price suddenly, and then it got corrected by the right price. So which means that the people who bought at this price, this low price, um, just suddenly earned 50, more, 50 times more than they, you know, uh, their purchase price. So this was, um, I mean, I, I wasn't involved. I couldn't buy you know, at this low price. So I was really shocked. And I was, um, this is, yeah, this is pretty bad. Uh, people are just not happy with what Coin1 has. Not Coin One. I don't think it's Coin One's fault. I think it's somebody who uh, accidentally put Ethereum Classic um, 
sale on a really low price at this price, I think on accident, I, I'm not sure. And people are guessing who did it and why they did it. But um, yeah, the, there's been there's been no uh, official um, conclusion news coming out. So yeah, this is just a room, um, sad happening that happened. Um, another uh, next news is that coin market cap. Um, I'm sure many of you noticed, but coin market cap excluded uh, the Korean um, cryptocurrency exchanges in their price um, calculations. Um, and I, many people asked me why why this happened, and they were panicking. So are this are these cryptocurrency exchanges really disappearing? And there are many rumors on this. And um, there was um, there was news official news on. Um, CoinDesk and everything, but it was covered by the major news. But um, it just turns out that the uh, pri price fluctuations are so high on um, the Korean crypto exchanges, so they excluded um, the Korean exchanges in total. So that's just the simple reason, not just the fact that they, you know, for example, um, coin market cap, they knew that cryptocurrency exchanges in Korea would be banned or something like that, and so they excluded it already, pre um, just as a uh, uh, as a preemptive measure or something, and this is not true. Uh, this is just a um, simple reason because of the price volatility. So, um, yeah, many people ask me about this. Uh, so Kimchi Premium, I'm sure many of you know about this. Kimchi Premium is, a, or Korea Premium, is what is making the uh, price so high in Korean exchanges. And this is really um, different. I mean, it seems like there's a huge gap between the exchanges um, be in Korea and outside of the world. So, I mean, it's very different. The price um, changes are very, uh, very extreme. So I think um, this is one of the reasons why they excluded to calculate the right price for the coins. So, um, yeah, this is just um, recent news that happened. And last news um, is that, I mean, I've experienced it myself, um, and I'll, a lot of my friends are asking me, uh, whether they can make new accounts in uh, the cryptocurrency exchanges. And it's, I mean, during the past three, two, to two months, uh, it's been really shocking that everyone around me is talking about cryptocurrencies. And it hasn't been happening for the, like at least three months ago. It wasn't if, even in the talks. But now it's just everyone is talking about um, buying, you know, certain coins, Ripple, uh, quantum, whatever, and they're asking me, um, is this going to go up or go down? And it's very, becoming very popular in Korea, um, as if it's sort of like a uh, popular app or something, you know? So it's it seems like everyone, especially the young generation, is really interested in trading cryptocurrency to some degree. Um, I mean, Upbit, uh, with the introduction of Upbit, it's been really uh, easy to access to cryptocurrency exchanges. So I think um, that's that event really triggered this po popularity of um, trading. So I think um, due to that, so there's been a huge discrepancy between people who traded earlier and people or invested earlier or people who just are trying to invest right now because they, as you know, the Korean um, cryptocurrency exchanges cannot does not accept uh, new accounts, making new accounts. So people who want to trade right now, they can't because they can't make a new account. So people who are already been trading, they you know will continue trading. But um, market entrance is not uh, allowed right now at the moment, temporarily, of course. But um, so people are, are panicking actually. They want they're in line to um, to to wait for this uh, to uh, the measure be lifted. So. Depression. There's been Bitcoin depression among the young generation um, because you can uh, you see cases where people drop out of work, they quit work all of a sudden because they earned this amount of money out of cryptocurrency trading. So they be suddenly become rich and they you know quit everything that they have have done or worked or anything. So, I mean, this kind of phenomenon is negative in a way. Uh, of course, it's negative because people you know they don't feel the urge to work. Um, they just want to earn easy, quick money, right? So this is actually, I think this uh, phenomenon is triggering the government regulations to be stronger. And uh, I think this is a really sad phenomenon, but I mean, it's becoming really pop too popular, too popular in Korea. Um, yeah, hello, JM. Hello, everybody. Um, yeah, so um, as you can see, there are so many news to be covered. Um, and my voice is still, it's, 
I'm, I'm really surprised it's holding on okay. But um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, so many news to cover and it's been happening very um, uh, intensively during the last 24 hours. So uh, it's been a hectic day for uh, the Korean market. I'm sure the world, of course, because it's it seems that Korean market, whatever happens in the Korean market, it really influences the entire market as well. So, and there um, hasn't been legit legitimate news source to kind of deliver quickly in English what's happening in the Korean market. So this is the whole point of Crypto, crypto Soul, and um, hopefully I can, you know, uh, continue doing it um, more than once a week. Uh, so yeah, I mean, 2018 will be a new year, new um, opportunities, and hopefully the Korean um, government kind of, you know, wake up and <laughs> kind of, you know, look at the reality and, and and kind of embrace the fact that high regulations, heavy regulations doesn't solve the issue. And it will actually make the bubble more, you know, bigger, actually. That's what I think. Um, so yeah, uh, please click like, uh, follow me on um, YouTube. And uh, there's, um, I've, you know, put my email address, CryptoSoul at gmail.com. And also, um, I put out donation addresses on ETH, Bitcoin Cash. <laughs> um, so please, um, uh, if you want to keep seeing my news and to uh, you know keep um, hearing about the Korean market, um, hopefully we'll see Icon soon with the interview. Um, so or Mediblock, uh, yeah, please get, uh, please donate. <laughs> so thank you so much. Um, sorry about the voice again. Um, hopefully next week it'll be a much you know. Uh, better. Um, I'll deliver more better news of the Korean market. So yeah, thank you. And uh, we'll see you again. Bye. <laughs>